Number one, state the end behavior of the following functions without using a graphing calculator. So when we talk about end behavior, we need to determine the degree of the polynomial and its leading coefficient. So for f of x, the highest exponent that I see is an x to the fourth. So that negative 3x to the fourth term dominates this polynomial and determines its end behavior. So it's an even degree polynomial because 4 is the degree, so it's even and has a negative leading coefficient. So it's going to look something like that. I have no idea what's going to happen in the middle, but the end behavior is going to be as x approaches positive infinity, as x gets really positive, well, it's, it's going to be approaching f of x is going to be approaching negative infinity because the function is going to have this overall shape. I don't know what happens in the middle, but it's going to have that overall shape. And as x approaches negative infinity, as x gets really negative, as I plug in really big negative numbers, f of x is still going to be approaching negative infinity. Letter g. Letter g, this function is a fifth degree polynomial because x to the fifth is the highest power that I see there. So that dominates this polynomial and will determine its end behavior. I have a positive leading coefficient. So I have an odd degree polynomial and a positive coefficient. It's going to look something like that. I have no idea what happens in the middle, but I know as x approaches infinity, f of x, the function, the y values approach infinity. And as x approaches negative infinity, my y values, my f of x values go to negative infinity as well. So as I plug in really negative numbers, I get out really negative outputs. As I plug in really positive numbers, I get positive outputs. That's the end behavior of those functions. Determine if the function g of x is even, odd, or neither, algebraically and graphically. Well, determine algebraically if it's even or odd. We look at g of negative x. So I'm going to plug a negative x into this function. Wherever I see an x, I'm going to replace it with a negative x. So that's 7, negative x to the fourth, minus 9 times negative x squared, plus 2. Well, that's 7, negative x to the fourth. That's going to be x to the fourth, minus 9. Negative x times negative x is positive x squared, plus 2. Well, this is 7x to the fourth, minus 9x squared, plus 2. That's the original function. That's g of x. So... The effect of negating my x values gives me back the function with the plain old x value. So g of x, g of negative x equals g of x. This implies that g is even. So if I graph this, g is going to be symmetric about the y-axis. So I graph this function, and it's this red cortic polynomial here. And if we look at it, if I reflect this function across the y-axis, I'm going to get the same thing g of 2, g of, g of 1 is the same thing as g of negative 1. This function, if I reflect it across the y-axis, will always be the same. It's going to reflect onto itself. So this function is even. This is an even function. Number 3, sketch a graph of this function by examining n behavior, the leading coefficient, and the zeros. Well, first let's deal with the zeros. It's already in factored form, so I need to know when does negative 2 times x plus 1 times x minus 3 times x plus 5 squared equals 0? Well, that happens at x equals negative 1, x equals 3, and x equals negative 5. But x equals negative 5 has multiplicity 2. This is a repeated root. So I'm going to put multiplicity 2 under that to remind myself. These zeros just have multiplicities of 1. So I have zeros at negative 1. I cross the x-axis. At negative 5, I cross the x-axis, and at 3. Well, let's talk about the leading coefficient. What's the degree of this polynomial? Well, it's going to be negative 2 x, x, 1 x, x times x is x squared, times x is x cubed, but I have two of those, so negative 2 x to the fourth. If I was to go through and determine the first term, and distribute this out, I get negative 2 x, x, and then I have two of them there, and I'm multiplying them together, so negative 2x to the fourth is the first term. Well, that's an even degree polynomial with a negative leading coefficient. So it's going to look something like that. I don't know what happens here in the middle, but I do know because I know where the zeros are. But as x approaches negative infinity, I'm going to come from that way, and as x approaches positive infinity, it's still going to be going down because I have that negative leading coefficient. So let's sketch this function. 
I hit 0 at x equals negative 5. But because it has that multiplicity, it has an even multiplicity, it's going to be tangent to the x-axis and turn around. I don't know where it's going to turn around, how far it's going to go, but I know it has to hit 0 again at negative 1. And that, that has an odd multiplicity, that has a multiplicity of 1, so it's going to cross through. And then it's going to turn around and hit the x-axis again at x equals 3, and cross through because it has a multiplicity of 1, and then continue on to negative infinity, like we thought it would be. So, this is a sketch of the function f of x. I don't really know what happens between my zeros, but I know it has this overall shape. You could graph it, and hopefully your graph will look something like this function we made here. Key thing, even multiplicities. Even multiplicities are tangent. They touch it and turn around. Odd multiplicities cross through. Number four, describe the end behavior of f of x. Is this function even odd or neither? Well, to describe end behavior, I need to find the degree of the polynomial, which is degree 5, because x to the fifth is the highest power. So I have an odd degree with a negative leading coefficient, the negative leading coefficient. So I know that that's going to look something like this. I have no idea what happens here in the middle. But as x approaches negative infinity, as I plug in really negative numbers, as I plug in really negative numbers, my function is going to give me back really positive numbers. It's going to go up to positive infinity. And as x approaches positive infinity, my y values, my outputs, are going to go to negative infinity. If I plug in really big numbers here, really big positive numbers, well, that's going to be positive times a negative is going to give me a negative. If I plug in really negative numbers here, a negative times a negative is a positive. Is this function odd, even, or neither? Well, we could do it this algebraically or by graphing it. I think graphing it's the easiest way. So, looking at a graph of this function, I need to say, can I reflect it across the y-axis and get the same thing? If I take this point and reflect it across the y-axis, do I get the same thing? No, it doesn't get carried onto itself. So it's definitely not even, because it doesn't have a symmetry across the y-axis. If I take this function and rotate it 180 degrees about the origin, so let's pay, take that point right there. If I take that point and rotate it 180 degrees about the origin, does it map onto itself? No. So this function is neither. This function is neither even or nor not, nor odd. So it's not even, it's not odd, it's neither. You can determine this algebraically by looking at f of x and seeing that you don't get the function back and you also don't get the negation of the function back. So it is neither. Number five, the following scatter plot represents the data from a study produced by the Center for Transportation Analysis. The study observes a car's speed in miles per hour and also, records, also recorded the car's fuel economy in miles per gallon. Determine if the polynomial function that models the data would have an even or odd degree. Well, here's my data. Let me draw a function through it. So my function looks something like that. That would fit that data. Is that an even or odd degree polynomial? Well, as I approach infinity and as I approach negative infinity, the end behavior, my function's going to negative infinity, so I'm going to have an even degree. This is going to be an even degree because... As I plug in really positive and as I plug in really negative numbers, both of them result in a negative. Odds, they go opposite ways. Evens always go the same way. Is the leading coefficient of the polynomial that can be used to model this data positive or negative? Well, positive even degree polynomials look like our x squared functions. This does not go to positive infinity. These go to negative infinity. <laughs> So my leading coefficient is going to be negative. We have a negative leading coefficient. So it's an even degree polynomial with a negative leading coefficient. That's all we can tell from looking at this scatter plot. I don't know what the degree is, but I know it should be even. Explain my reasoning, we talked through that. You should have a sentence written on your paper. Explain your reasoning, you have to have a sentence written. Number six, can you sketch a graph of an odd degree polynomial with no x-intercepts? Explain your reasoning. So if I have a, on my axes an odd degree polynomial, odd degree polynomials look like x cubed or negative x cubed. Overall, they look like that. As I approach negative infinity, 
I'm approaching negative infinity. And as I approach, my x's approach positive infinity, my function approaches positive infinity as well. So just based on that end behavior, at some point, this function is going to have to hit the x-axis and give you an x-intercept. Just because the end behavior says it starts at negative infinity if I read left to right and goes up to positive infinity, I'm going to have to hit zero at some point. And if I have a negative leading coefficient, I'm still going to have to hit that x-axis at some point because of the end behavior of the polynomial. So Number seven, solve this equation for all real values of x. So it's a polynomial equation, so I need two things. It needs to be factored and set equal to zero so I can use the zero product property. So it's set equal to zero, but it's not factored. So I notice that there's a GCF of x, so I'm going to factor that out, factor out the x, and I'm left with this trinomial to factor. Hopefully it can be factored. The leading coefficient's not one, so we need to use the AC method. What multiplies to 12 times 5, what multiplies to 60, that adds to 17. What multiplies to 60, that adds to 17? Well, that's 12 times 5. So I use those two numbers to split up that middle term. I rewrite 17x as plus 12x plus 5x. Now I group. I look at the first two terms. What can I factor out? I can factor out a 12x. And I'm left with, I factor out a 12x, and I'm left with x plus 1. If I multiply that back in, I'll get that green underlined portion. Group the next two terms. I'm going to factor out a 5. What am I left with? x plus 1, which is good because now I have a GCF again. I have a GCF of x plus 1, and I'm left with 12x plus 5. So that's the factored version of this polynomial here. So this equation is, has the same solutions as this equation. And now we apply the zero product property. x equals zero, x minus x equals negative one, because that would give me a zero. And then 12x plus five, I'm going to solve this out, equals zero minus five, 12x equals negative five, divide by 12, and we get x equals negative five twelfths. So those are the three zeros of this function. What they solve, these are the solutions to the equation. 12x cubed plus 17x squared plus 5x equals zero. Number eight, is the following equation a polynomial identity? Explain, show why or why not. So if something's an identity, if I plug in any numbers, it'll always be true. So let's play around with numbers first to see if this is true. Let's say x equals one and a equals three. Does 1 minus 3 squared equal 1 squared plus 3 squared? Well, that's 2 squared minus 2 squared, which is 4. Does 4 equal 10? Last time I checked, it didn't. So I know right away right now that it's not an identity. If you went and expanded this out, that would be x minus a times x minus a. You would get x squared minus 2ax plus a squared. That is not the same as x squared plus a squared. x squared minus 2ax plus a squared is not the same as that, so therefore I know it's not an identity. But I see that quickly by plugging in those numbers. If this is f of x, evaluate f of x plus 3. So I want to plug in x plus 3 into my function. So f of chicken nugget is x squared, not x squared, it's chicken nugget squared, it's chicken nugget squared minus 4 times chicken nugget minus 5. Well, in this case, my chicken nugget is not just x anymore, it's x plus 3. So f of x plus 3 is that thing squared minus 4 times x plus 3 minus 5. Let's expand this out. x squared plus 6x plus 9, after you square that, minus 4x minus 12 minus 5. x squared plus 2x Minus 8? Yes, minus 8. 9 and minus 5 gives me plus 4. Good. So f of x plus 3 is this expression right here. x squared plus 2x minus 8. Function notation, whatever's on the inside of the parentheses, you're going to pick up and plug into f. Number 10. If a cubic polynomial p has zeros at x equals 2, x equals 5, and x equals negative 7, and passes through the point 164, write an equation for p of x. So it's a third degree polynomial, so my end result should be something cubed. 
That's my end result. Has zeros at x equals 2, 5, and negative 7. Well, if I have a 0 at x equals 2, the factor remainder, the, the factor 0 theorem tells me that x minus 2 is a factor, x minus 5 is a factor, and x plus 7 is a factor. So I know that p of x is x minus 2 times x minus 5 times x plus 7. But remember, we don't know what the leading coefficient is. The leading coefficient might not be 1. That's why we have this point here. So I'm going to use a to represent the leading coefficient right now. If I plug in a 1 for x, I should get 64. So 64 equals a times 1 minus 2, 1 minus 5, 1 plus 7. 64 is a times negative 1, negative 4 times 8. 64 equals 20, not 28, 32. Positive 32a, after I multiply those all together, divide by 32 and you get a equals 2. So my leading coefficient here is 2. So p of x equals 2 times x minus 2 times x minus 5 times x plus 7. They didn't say in standard form, so I'm not going to waste five minutes of my life expanding that into standard form. I like factored form because it tells me the zeros. So that's the equation for p of x. That's the polynomial that has those three zeros and passes through that point. There's infinitely many polynomials that have those zeros but there's only one polynomial that passes through that point and has those zeros.